I don't suspension. Have, I, 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 can, know what you're, I know what you're talking about, but I don't have it. I can email it to you now. Okay. Okay. And then Excellent. Liz, if you can please start recording to the cloud, that'd be great. And Already Liz, set. Do we have Ken? Not Has yet. Ken showed up? Not so far. I don't think I have him in suspense. I do have participation five. That includes Angela and myself. So. Okay. So I'll, I'm looking at my you. email. I'll send it right now. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Did everybody receive the minutes and the agenda? I, yep. And I think I think I have to actually read the um, read the. Um, the disclosure the, that she just sent you yeah okay uh, and i'm waiting for it i'm waiting for it on my screen here hmm. uh, do, we have do we have any um Ken seems to be looking for a link. So I am going to send him Angela's. Um, I don't know why he would not have gotten that. I so. got I got my link today. So that wasn't a problem. Yeah, you should have got it a couple of days ago, though. I'm surprised. Uh, I, that I, I think I got it. I got it today and I got it earlier, too. OK. Yep. I'm going to try <clears throat> sending it over to Ken. Let me see if I can open my email again and see if it'll come up. All right, I've resent it to Ken, so hopefully he'll be joining us soon. Okay. Don't ask me why my computer computer all of a sudden got really loud. Um, thank you for all the attachments we got <laughs> to look at. Well, don't thank me. I think that uh, a lot well, of the work was done by David and by Ken. Um, they did a lovely job with the planning. Oh, well, um, I, I didn't see that. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Uh, are there attachments that we should have gotten from Dave and Ken? I didn't get those. I, David, did he did he forward them or was he? Did he I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Well, we'll discuss it in the in the meeting. They did a Ken Hargreaves. Job. Not sure. I got a Zoom link for this meeting. Well, I did. Um, All right. So, okay. I did send it to him a second time. So hopefully he's going to be joining us soon. I just got the thing from Angela. Okay. Yeah, I just got the thing from Angela too. It just came through. Is that okay. the script? Yes, it's the script. Uh, I got it in two different attachments. Do I have to read both of them? I don't think so. I think one should be sufficient. <laughs> it's basically re reiterating the change in the open meeting laws uh, due to COVID. Okay. Do you want me to start? Or I believe waiting? you have to state are we, that, yes. Are we waiting for Ken? Um, it's up to you. I mean, um, he does have the link, so I hope that he will be joining us as soon as he has I'm not sure that, that, that you should. I think Angela has to send him the link, not you. I can't forward the link to him. Don't think so. They're individual when they get here. I've got her on the thing on. Okay. Are you talking to Angela now, David? I am, yes. All right, very good. Then I won't bug the bugger. She's my cookie lady. We need to keep her in good graces. <laughs> <clears throat> She's going to think we don't know what we're doing. She might be right. <laughs> Jeez, I hope not. Come on now. Give us more credit than that. It's the technicalities we need help with, right? Mm -hmm. mm.
Do we think Ken is trying to get in? Oh, he is. <clears throat> so did everybody have a great vacation this year? <laughs> or a staycation, as they say? Staycation, yes. <laughs> I'm ready to travel whenever. Lee, your audio's off. What? Lee's audio's off. No, everything's recorded, just so you know. Lee is muted right now. Yeah, I, I, I muted myself. Oh, OK. Uh, do you want me to start or do you want me to wait? It's up to you, sir. Uh, we've got a quorum, so I'm going to start and hopefully Ken will get in here. Um, so let me read the statement. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Board of uh, Amherst Board of Assessors is being conducted by a rem remote participation. Um, I'm, I'm supposed to roll, make sure that everyone's uh, video and audio is working properly. I, it appears that it is. Uh, this meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, I now call this um, February 11th meeting to uh, 20, 2021, February 11th meeting to order. Okay. Um, right now, I do not see any public participation, correct? All right, yeah. Nope. And I'm going to go on to the motor vehicle abatements that are in the agenda. I think we need to approve the minutes for the January. I'm, I'm taking the... Uh, oh, I'm Ken, sorry. Welcome. I did jump it. I did oh, jump Ken, it. And well, welcome, Ken. Thank you. I had to get hey, off Ken. Back on. I don't know what happened. Can you see us and hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm what first I want to draw your attention to the January 14th minutes. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 January 14th, 2021 me, uh, minutes are approved. Now, Ms. Duffy, you're on. Okay. Well, I'm going to share my screen because the first thing we have on the agenda is to sign the abatement reports. So right now, um, we show abatements in the amount of 166.44. This is, is this, for 2020. This is for um, January 12th, 2021 to January 19th, 2021. Correct. Okay. I move that we uh, approve our signatures on, on uh, that set of abatements. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Ken, can you see them? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Okay, this is our second set of abatements. Um, I don't think you want me to go through all 35 pages of it, so I've just gone to the summary. No, is there I, any questions on that? Does everybody have a copy of the complete report? or? I had 54 pages. Did, did, did I get that wrong? No, I have 35. 35. Really? Is that is that normal for you, Mass, or is this COVID? No, no it's normal. Yeah. yeah, that's normal. That many? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, this the, is for the period of January 26th to January 29th. 
Um, these are uh, excise abatements that are, are coming through for our vehicles in the amount of 154, 230, and six cents. Okay, now on the agenda, it said 152, so I'm just. I'm sorry, 152, 230. Yes. That's correct. 152, 230, and six yes. cents. Um, do I have a motion to approve th those abatements? So moved. Okay, so, second. Question, on, question on this. Yes. These are things that they're, they've sold or they got rid of? Um, yes, in many cases, this is a matter of these vehicles have been adjusted or, or sold or what have you before the, well, but it looks <clears> like most of this is just exempt. Correct. You know, I'm looking this at time you have on the send this out the, the list, uh, it comes, and I don't know why, but they send us all the state and UMass property or vehicles are there, and then we have to abate them off. Oh, so we put them on and then we have to take them off. Yeah, well, yeah, they send them to us in whole, and then, then we have to remove anything tax exempt. Okay. But they, they have to, I think, by law, send them to us regardless of whether they're exempt or not. Right. Okay. Um, uh, we have a motion to approve those abatements. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, moving along. Now we go to the warrants. Okay, and the first one for the warrants, let me get it up for you. It's ginormous, let me get it down to something reasonable. Okay, can everybody see the warrant that I have up or do I need to reshare? Yes, I can see it. I've got it, I saw, I saw it earlier this morning when I was reviewing the attachments. All right, this is commitment number seven. For 2020, and this is for eleven thousand four hundred fifty-nine dollars and thirty-two cents. Okay, and I'm forgetting now. Why why are we seeing these in February for 2020? What's the how does that work? Can someone just explain it? Um, the reason that you're seeing them now is they may not have been there on the 2020s initial list. Okay. I am moved move to approve that this uh, commitment of eleven thousand four hundred fifty nine dollars and thirty two cents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, we're moving on to the second commitment. It's commitment number one. And of course, this is going to be a biggie because this is our main commitment for the year. Isn't that correct, uh, David? Yep. Okay. This is the bulk of the excise motor vehicle excise taxes that we collect every year. Um, okay, this right? is the bulk. Yeah. Just motor or personal? This is motor vehicle. Motor vehicle. Okay. Okay. We have one million for. Uh, Actually, yeah, one million four hundred and eighty-two dollars. Two thousand four two hundred and forty-four and thirty-four cents. Okay, I move to approve that commitment for twenty for the year twenty twenty-one motor vehicle excise. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. And now we're going to discuss the residential exemption and means test for seniors tax relief. That's on the agenda. That's next on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think. Uh, were, were there some documents we were supposed to see before this or? Um, well, uh, my update right now would be uh, we've drafted a cover letter and a, a real rough survey. And Liz and David are sort of looking at those. And um, I think the thought would be we'd share it with you guys after we get our input back to them. Okay. Um, uh, I do have the survey questions. Um, I put them on letterhead and I put them in Survey Monkey. And Survey Monkey is a, a, a survey that the town has um, engaged for the planning and zoning and uh, communications. So I'm going to utilize that again. Some of the information that um, we have there is going to be static information that we don't need to ask. Um, I've got the questions limited to the following 
for the survey. And I thought I'd bring them, bring them up so that you could take a look. So let me see if I can bring them up for you. I was hoping to send you a sample in SurveyMonkey so that you would be able to see it. Um, but rather than belabor it, I figured that this would be a little bit easier. Can I understand that uh, you couldn't send those documents to us because it would have been outside of a meeting, right? I think we can send them. I don't see if there's a reason that we no, can't now, send them. No, now, now, yeah, we're in the meeting, so sure. Yeah, I don't I'm saying. I think we can look at the documents. We just can't talk about them. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Can you can each one give feedback to Liz? Yeah, I said absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. As long as we're not talking amongst ourselves. Okay. That, that's yeah. So let me share this document here. This is the survey. And I, I believe also Liz cannot share the feedback she gets from each one of us. Okay. Outside of the meeting. Well, how do we modify the survey then? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Can you all see the survey that I'm presenting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And basically, this is a modification of what Ken has sent us. And, um, you know, some of the information we do not need to collect that, that, that Ken has um, suggested only because we do have some of the information already in our database. Um, obviously, unique ID, the address, the type of property. So we don't really need to ask them some of the questions. But um, the big one. I was you hoping to occupy the property. Liz, wait a minute, Liz. I was hoping that you could generate that information, not have them respond to it. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, the um, idea is to still mail this to everybody, right? I think so. Then have our uh, like, However, one of the things I wanted to share with you is the response I got back from uh, Lane Partridge. He was the former president of the MAAO, the Trade Organization for Assessors within the state. And he said that um, one of the things, and I just obtained it, was the voter list. The voter list is real informative as far as determining who's in apartments and who's in resident, residentially owned properties as well. I didn't even think of that. I thought that was a great idea because he said that he did not send out a survey. He gathered the information from that um, list of voters and from the um, residential exemption that they filed with the uh, deeds that we have. So between those two elements, he had bypassed sending out a survey to the community. Okay. How does everybody so we feel might not, about that information? Well, we might not have to get that information, but other information that we can't get. Okay. Causes, in my mind, send a survey. I mean, I guess what, thinking more about the survey, uh, everyone can give input right now because we're in a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. So it's important we need as many minds on this as possible. Mm. Um, it's important to give as much feedback right now where we can share and talk about it. Um, because I've thought of some more things here and some things that we can delete like Liz said. So why don't you walk us through it, Liz, from your viewpoint? Okay, well, the first question is, um, you had mentioned the unique ID, the property address, the owner of record. We'll have that all information on the survey that goes out to each and every one of these people that re receives a, a survey. What's the um, unique ID number? What is that? The unique ID number, um, David, did we want to use the PID or did we want to use the, the ID number that, that uh, is used in Munis? I was thinking the ID number that was used in Munis, but the PID number is only like five characters long. Well, yeah, I think a PID number because that'll be the way we're looking for to go back on the vision. All right, so we'll make that um, That's a PID number. Partial identification number, Ken. Yeah. Because right. it is specific to real estate. Okay. And then the property uh, address is, of course, the location. So the PID um, number is on my tax bill, is that right? It's on your property record. Well, it's on your real estate that record. That's okay. online. I'm, I'm getting a survey in the mail. I'm, I'm, where do I find my PID number? You would look, you would see it on your property oh, record. Well, this will be on your survey already. That gets it, it was, it's going to say, I was going to say, it's going to be already populated. All right. Okay. With yeah, the, I understand, but will folks question what that is? Um, well, I'll spell it out. Obviously, okay. we'll make it okay. property identification. Yeah. And then they can relate that to their uh, tax bill. And um, how do we, um, how do we get, how do we motivate people to turn this back in again? I mean, when I 
I got my I got my town clerk um, census uh, this week, and I was threatened with being taken off the tax rolls on the front of the front really? of the thing. So I turned it around. <laughs> That'll get your attention, right? And I, I I turned it around immediately and sent it back on the same day. Okay. Um, which I assume is something is the kind of thing that we're looking for here too. Yeah, I mean, this is going to determine whether. So how or not... do we? So how do we motivate people? What is it that we're telling people about? the purpose of this survey? Yeah. Good question. Yeah. That should be on the cover letter that Ken right. provided. It gives them a good idea of what's going to happen. Yes, yeah, so let me bring up the cover letter. So I have to say the motivation would be you're saving tax dollars if you fill this in and let us send it back to Right. You have a potential, right. Let me share the document that, they, that uh, Ken gave us for a cover letter. OK. I struggled with it because it, it turned out to be longer than I thought it would be. But you know what? Getting your 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 thoughts on paper first yeah. was a good idea. Yeah. Let's see. So this is the cover letter. Can everybody see that? No, not yet. Until you blow it up. Yeah. There you go. How's that? <laughs> I'll get it up to the top first. Okay, so we'll obviously okay. populate that with the name, address, and so forth of the person that's going to be the recipient. Um, so, I'm not going to narrate this for you. Would you, you know? Yeah. Um, are we going to approve anything today? I think it's a matter of sharing the information and then okay. uh, right. having a chance to digest it. It's quite a bit. Okay. Um, but you do need to get feedback to Liz on this, and she can make changes. Right. On this so letter. can I distribute this, Richard, to the to the group? I can send yes. it out to you right yeah. now. Because yes. rather okay. than having you try to, to see it online and, and yes. read if each of these it, things. If you, if you send it via email the way Teresa sent stuff to us, I think we can look at them. You look at All right. Again. Then I will give Teresa the information and make sure she does it through that process that she's been giving you the agenda and so forth. That's good. This does look like a, a long read for a, a lot of people. Yeah. Is it more well, than one? Is it more it's, than one page? Yes, it is. Ooh. Yes, it is. It's actually page two pages, but not that bad. A lot of it was taken from David's write up and Liz's write up of the classification. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, not. It's, a, uh, it's, it's a matter of putting it out there so that everybody can truly understand it, and uh, short enough that they'll respond and read it, read it and respond. And part of it was. The one time we were thinking two letters, one to the owner occupants and one to the non owner occupants, including commercial. But then I looked at it, and I said, well, maybe we just do one letter to both everybody mm -hmm. and modify the survey so you only complete certain sections depending on your an owner occupant or not. I and like the idea that you also we, said to jump to a certain section if you answered yes or no. Do we want to have some a short blurb in the Amherst Bulletin about what we're doing? It's not a bad idea. What do you think, gentlemen? Well, I think, Liz, you have to run it up your chain of command. There, I will, John, before I send out anything. Manager. Yeah. I'm sure that Paul's got to tell the council what's going on here so they don't get blindsided. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, and then beyond that, I'd leave it up to Paul, but that's a good idea to suggest. Yeah. Okay. So, Ken and Dave, uh, when do you, what's your target date for getting this out? Well, well that's a nice me. Go ahead. When's the next board meeting? March 11th. If we could finalize it March 11th, uh, I don't see why we couldn't get it out by the end of March. And the reason I'm saying that is that I've been working with Mike um, Warner, and I now have every parcel has now, uh, every residential parcel now either identifies as owner occupied or not owner occupied. So we've got over 6,237 or something with them. Uh, that we can refine because we're not going to send Barry Roberts a letter for every property he's got. I mean, we'll send one to the owner and uh, let him work with us from there. I don't, I, I don't see the point in sending it to everybody or every parcel. We certainly have to send it to everybody. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. The only question is some of those surveys. We're seeking information about each parcel instead of just each owner. But well, you could do that too. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you want to do that, that, that's fine. We could do it, no problem. 
Uh, we just put them all in one envelope and they can fill uh, it down. That's a good idea. The other thing to keep in mind, gentlemen, is that we are sending the income and expense request form to those multi-unit um, property owners. So the folks that have four or more units will receive a survey this year, very shortly, that's going to ask them, you know, their tenancy. So maybe we want to ask them about some of their tenancies, since I've got to send that out as to, um, you know, the uh, year-round tenant versus the seasonal tenant or the student tenant. Yeah, if you're going to send something to them already, we don't have to ask them in the survey more stuff that you've already asked them for. Well, that's the point, I guess, is yeah. um, if we're going to be sending, if it's less than four units, though, this would be an opportunity to send it out to those folks. So folks that have less than four units are usually going to not going to get the income and expense form unless they have a lot of units like the Jones and so forth. Yeah, I'd be inclined to send the letter to everybody, but modify the survey to delete stuff that you're already getting on the bigger projects. Because one of the things that we had on the initial survey was the number of units. Is that appropriate since we're going to be sending out? You don't um, need that if you already have it. The right. only reason I put it on there, I was also asking how many units are student occupied versus not occupied. And I was hoping they'd add up to the total units. Okay. Do you that see the one. survey, gentlemen? But I think all this breakdown by units, you're probably getting that or you already have it. So you can take all that out. Well, not necessarily. I mean, some folks make a closet into another unit, you know? So oh. it's it's the under, under four bedroom that is going to be um, something that usually doesn't get the income and expense form. And- So Liz, why don't you start at the top and just, if we're back to the survey. Sure, sure, be yeah. glad to. So um, this is what I have for um, the survey so forth. We'd have the, um, the property identification number, the property address, and the owner of record. Um, we're asking, um, do you, did you own or occupy the property uh, as your principal residence in the town of Amherst January 1st, 2021? Is that correct? Do we want to do it as of 2021? Uh, yeah. yeah, is that right there? Okay. Yeah, because the criteria is like, isn't it? You have to be there a year or something like that. That's the reason I was asking. You have to, I, As if, you have to order before July 1st. July 1st. So do we want to change this to July 1st? 2020. No, I, honestly, I'd leave it at January 1st because people may sell between now and January and then we get notified by the registry if they send out a new letter. Okay. Because we, you know, we'll, I assume we're going to continue this um, once we get a deed, we're going to send another copy of the survey to the new owner, just in case they are not owner occupying, or they are. Okay. Um, all right. So it's saying um, in section one, did you file a 2019? So first of, first of all, if you answer no to that, you go, you skip all of section one. Right. So if you if you did answer no, I'm not the principal resident of that property. You're going to go all the way down to section two and skip all the next section. Does anybody have any problem with that? Nope. Yeah. Okay. And, and then as I said, I'll be sending these documents to you so you will be able to get an opportunity to comment on them, give me feedback. Um, and I did plug this all into SurveyMonkey. So um, I will send you a test run to see how it looks and see if you're getting the qu questions clear and know what to do as far as a response. Um, section one, did you file a 2019 Massachusetts income tax return? Yes or no? Is the parcel owned by a trust? I think we can eliminate that question because we will have that information in the transfer of title. Okay, as long as you're sure your data is accurate. Yeah, I, I should be. I mean, it's right from the, the, the land records and that's the authority for who owns the title. Okay. Um, so I think we can get rid of that one. Um, now it says here, list the location and type of other real estate owned by you. Is that really necessary? Not if you're gonna send it to every parcel. Okay, or so really parcel. that's, I don't think that's gonna be necessary. Every parcel or every improved parcel? No, we'll have an improved parcel, yes. So every improved parcel will receive this. Um, so whether they have vacant land, it's not gonna be relevant, correct? Right. 
So let's get rid of that one. Uh, Have you received or applied for any other? Wow, what's that from? Anybody? You're, you're lightning behind you, Liz. <laughs> I don't. I mean, if they own two properties, they can only they can't. You know, if they can't claim the owner occupant of the second property too. Right. That's true. That is true. Um, however, we'll have a list of those properties so that we can loan them out. So maybe asking them that, that question might be more confusing. Um, I don't know. Okay, so you do have a list. You don't have a list when they own property somewhere else in Massachusetts, though. That is what we don't have. So asking them if they have property outside of the town of Amherst, that would be the, the question. So have you received or applied for other residential exemption and or homestead in any other state, city, or town? I think that's perfect, just the way you Yeah, that will, that will probably cover it if they have property somewhere else at this okay. point. And then occur. the other, the secondary to that same question is, if yes, what city or state, or city or state? So I think that's good, a uh, good question to leave in there, don't you, gentlemen? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. how many of us have uh, that dream house in Florida with my sister, huh? All right. Oh, come now. It's too warm. What, why do we want to know that? <laughs> I guess the question is, is whether or not they're already receiving this exemption in another community. Oh, okay. You can't get okay. it in two. Right. Okay. No double hitting. Yeah. Um, so the section two is type of residential property. I don't necessarily think we need that type of residential property. Do you, David? Because we'll have that on the property information that we, we have. We should on have the, that on the card. We should already have that on the property card. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if we need any of this, do we? Well, I'd like to have the permit number just because that, that's not a problem. We can certainly leave yeah. the permit number. I'd like to have them jog their memory. If they don't have a permit, they should get one. I guess my question is, what would you like to leave into this section? Um, I think you can probably take out the property type if you're. It's, not, I, it's entirely up to you. I don't want to take out no. what you think might be critical. No, I just, I took a lot of this off the state form that's required every year to be filed. Sure. So, but I take that out. Okay. So this section here where it says single condo and so forth, residential, wait, 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 but no, you want the permit number. I want the permit. Um, so how should we phrase this question? Just take out the type of residential, just. Okay. So, um, how would we want to phrase this is what I guess my question. Just like it is a Amherst rental permit number. Yeah, I think you should be all right with that. So just leave it as is. Yep. Um, how about total number of units in the property? That's probably not a bad thing, right? I like that. I don't think you need the breakdown anymore if you got good data on that. Yeah, we have to do that. Do you think we should leave that alone? No, take it out, the breakdown. Okay. Because I'm not, well, I guess that, that works, right? Yeah. Um, units leased to university and college students. Um, do we want to change that maybe to non-residents? Because there might be um, uh, teachers and so forth that would be included in that group that would not be permanent residents, correct? That's mm -hmm. good. Well, I was coming at more from who's going to university and college versus whether they're a resident or not. Okay, so you don't think there's any others that would fall into that classification other than university students? No, I'm sure there's some, but. Um, so is there another question? I'm just, I'm just wondering is units leased to, should we add non-residents to that group? University slash college slash non-resident? That's what I was thinking. Okay. okay. University slash. That way we're kind of catching them all. Slash yeah. non-residents. Help me out. What what's the non-resident going to capture? What are we trying to capture there? Well, in some cases, you, you have right? more than just uh, students that are populating these these properties um, that are non-residents. So um, it's a matter of how many of them. If we just list that it's a university or college student, okay. help me out. What's, capture what's a resident? A resident is somebody that's 
registered to vote? What's a resident? Registered to vote is not necessarily the only category, but also uh, declares their state income tax to the state of Massachusetts versus another state. <clears throat> oh. Or another community for that matter. Richard? Yeah? As your uh, attorney, have an opinion on this one, does that sound discriminatory asking with university college? And yes, it does. Thank you for asking. That was kind of like my, my way of saying that, but if you oh. say non-residents, then it that doesn't make everybody. it, it makes it more general, don't you think? I, I think it's, I think it's a problematic question, but I yeah. understand where, I understand what Ken's trying to get at. Yeah, but, so do I. Um, so it would just be non-residents, period. That, that's what I was kind of leaning towards because when, then you're when, not scrutinizing one particular category of, of the population. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, if you read, I'm, uh, uh, this is the old, um, this is the old um, um, slippery concept of, of uh, what is a resident. Well, I think it's very clear what a resident is. If you claim you on your income tax um, that you are a resident of Massachusetts, of, of uh, Amherst, Massachusetts, then your residency and is in our, Amherst. And the, but the property owner doesn't know that. The property owner doesn't know if he if he is the owner occupant, but in this case, um, we're asking if they lease their property, if they are a you know year round resident, or if they are a if they're they are only temporary residents. They won't know. The property owner won't know. The property owner won't know uh, uh, where the where the taxpayer is is claiming residence. So really, we're going to have to rely on the voter list. Wouldn't you agree? Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I know. Well, you know, um, <clears throat> the only thing we're interested in hearing is, does the property owner occupy the property? Yeah, I mean, that's really what we need to know, isn't it? I mean, the, 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 whether it's a tenant or not on the non-owner occupied, oh. doesn't matter. I thought your database gave you a good read on that, but you're saying you would like to check the database. Yes. Okay. So, so I think that would be right at the top of section two. Does the owner occupy a unit in the property? Well, we have it right here in one. That's the first question we asked. Do you own and occupy a principal residence in the town of Amherst? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And if he says yes, and he's a proper an apartment owner, he occupies one of the, he says yes, then he doesn't go to section two. Correct. And that doesn't help us get any information about that apartment then. Okay, um, what sort of information are you talking about? Because we have to send out what we call income and expense statements to all the multifamilies, not three families, but four and above. Yeah. And, uh, at that point, we're asking them for a breakdown of all the units between one, two, three, four, yeah. and studio. So we will be getting that information. It'll be later in the game, but we will be getting it. Well, I guess the question is, can you send that same um, request to the two family, three family, four family, or not? As long as, uh, well, yeah, we just, but that was just a verification rather than asking for income. Because the incomes have no uses from those. Okay, I guess the question. But yes, you can, huh? You could verify your owner occupant if you sent some kind of question to the two, three, and four family at the same time you did the whole commercial. I don't yeah. know. We have a number of people. I was thinking with the income and expenses here. We have a number of people that have single and, and uh, under four unit parcels that they, they lease. And um, to folks like Jones Properties and um, WD Coles, they have a number of properties like that that kind of fall through the, the cracks. I was thinking to sending to those management companies and asking for the income and expense from them in bulk. So that could help us with some of them. Yeah, and you could add a question about is the uh, owner occupying one of the units? Mm -hmm. And that's that they they may or may not be able to supply that information. That's the tough one. But that's why I think maybe the voter list is a good way to cross match to see if um, how many are actually owner occupied and how many are, are rented. 
Would you say the majority of folks register to vote here? Mm -hmm. If they're residents? Oh, I think they do. I think, I think most people are pretty proactive here about that particular issue. So what we're getting then is a breakdown between people that um, from the voter list, we get a breakdown of who's registered to vote. That's everybody, students, older people, younger people, everybody. It's a complete list, yeah. And then how do we know those who are not registered, how do we know how many there are? Or how do we know? How, how many people that are in town that are not registered voters? That's the difference. You know, yeah, that's something that would be, um, you know, an estimated that occupy, calculation. That occupy units. Mm -hmm. Does the census help? The problem with the census is the last census data was 2000 mm -hmm. and everything they have in the census data bank is estimates. Current we, estimate is um, we we're, we're 39,000 something, we're almost 40,000 people. And that we have a daytime population of 61,000 people. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but they, um, as far as the, uh, the residents, they, they say that our residents are broaching, broaching 40,000. But that, like I said, is estimated. Yeah. Well, when's the 2020 data? They're doing it now. They're, they're, they've uh, gathered most of the information, but they kind of have an ongoing thing. It's like when a census does their thing in the community, they do um, different aspects of the census in different time periods. Right now they're doing the population, the demographics. That particular um, information is, is pretty time consuming and it takes a while to put it in. So um, they're, ca they're tabulating it as we speak for 2020. Do you think anything will be available by July? I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, okay. The American thought. survey, I guess, is the, uh, the standard that they use for um, distributing the information to the communities. It's the American Community Survey, I think it's called. Mm. And any one of you can go on it at, at, you know, at your leisure. I'll give you guys a link to it if, you'd, if you would like. And that way you can see the statistics. The other one I, I've got a lot of information from is the one that the um, MLS uses. It's city data. So if you put city hyphen data, you'll find a lot of information. And it really speaks volumes as to um, the makeup of the community and uh, the disparity between uh, residents and non-residents. It's almost evident right there. Is there any other questions you might have? Well, um, I can okay. send this out to you all. And, and like well, I said, yeah, I'll have some feedback and I'm, comments. I'm struggling with whether we do a survey at all. Um, because the, the whole intent in my thought was the survey would get us soft data that we can't get hard data on about. Right. That, that was the point of, the, of yeah. the survey. And things I was thinking about adding was income household levels. You know, you, you have everybody under 50,000, check that box. Everybody over 100,000, check that box. Did we have that on the survey? No, I didn't put it on, but I think- Income data. That's okay. one of the soft things we need to, because we're trying to determine who's going to be affected. What income levels are they in? Are they students? Are they not students? And if we don't do that, I'm not sure what the purpose of the survey is then. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how we're going to get at that data to tell people, you know, these are the income levels that are affected. Yeah. Well, and I guess the question is, is what, what, in, what in, information can we glean outside of a survey from other sources that's reliable and credible. So, you know, we're saying the, the, the voter list is a good credible source. The um, US Census, of course, but it's still not given us the latest and greatest and it probably won't until July. Um, everything there would be estimated. Um, and we're sending out the income and expense to the landlords of the rental property. Yeah, I just, I'm not, close enough to know what the voting list, I mean, the voting list tells us who's registered to vote. That's true. That's only half the puzzle though. I assume that that gives you the location as well though. She just sent it to me last night. Okay. So maybe we need to look closer at the voting list, what we can get from it. Yeah. But we can't get who's not on the voting list. We don't know who those are. That's the hard part is it's a matter of how many people participate in the voting process. I think you have a large volume, but it's hard for me to tell. Not 100%. Well, 
you know, I view this as sort of a Pandora's box that David has been sitting on for years now. No, he has And the Pandora's <laughs> box is the notion that a residential exemption would work, that would be fair, that would not have unintended consequences. And, um, you know, um, Dave has basically held this thing shut for some time now, but now we have sort of entertained the notion that there could be some exemption, there could be some rearrangement of the property tax burden among residential property taxpayers. And now, now we're sort of in a jam where we have to sort of prove it, that prove oh. that what we have, that, that the status quo is better than some exemption that we might uh, uh, recommend to the to council. Yeah, the council has an expectation that we're going to come back with something that, yes. that answers the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to come back with some of the answer to the question, we basically, you know, the, the survey we really need is just who owns the property and who occupies the property. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. I understand what Ken's looking for, and maybe that's another survey that we have to do. But all we're looking at is the, you know, the impact of this is on the apartment complexes has been one of our worries about what might happen to the tenants. But that's only something we can stress to the council and say this is a possibility. Ken and I have, uh, and Liz have worked up a um, spreadsheet that shows the impact on the apartment complexes by unit, not by number of beds, but by unit for each one of the 20, 10, 20, and 30% increases in the tax rate that we can share with you if you like. But that's based on yeah, that's based on the estimated information we have at the moment. How do you? So you're talking about the impact on rent, right? Right. How do you? Oh, they're talking about the talk, talking about the impact on taxes that would probably be passed along to the rent. Yes. And how do you how do you calculate that? How do you demonstrate that? How do you? Okay. Well, it's a matter of we figure out the um, we know the number of units in several of the parcels. Yeah. So we calculate the tax on the base rate, the base, base tax rate. Then what the tax rate would be at 10%, we calculate it again per unit, uh, the same thing for 20%. So we can compare the unit tax on uh, at the base rate of 21.82, and then at the next one at $23, and then the next one 24, and the next one 25. Yeah. And you can see that as each one. I mean, I'm happy to send that along. I don't. Uh, do you, uh, Ken, Ken and Liz have it, but uh, we can send it to you too as well. Okay. I mean, my assumption is, is that if you show that there's going to be an adverse impact on rents, that pretty much shuts, that pretty much ends the discussion, I think. Oh, well, they're definitely an adverse. They, they are oh, going that's to a definite. Case. That's a given. That's no question. Yeah, that's, that's, that that, there is fair, very few uh, landlords um, that rent residentially or commercially that do straight rents anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, most rents have uh, a clause in them that if there's an increase in the utilities or in the uh, taxes, that it's a pass through to the tenant. So my question, I guess my question here is, what is it that we have to produce for the council later this year? What is the information that we need to produce? How many people would benefit from this program and how many would be impacted um, negatively, I believe is the, the, what we're charged with. Yeah, and we we, you know, we will have. That sounds very difficult. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, it's not it's not only how many it's at what level. Oh, I mean, we have oh. we have that too. Oh. It's all part of the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. No, it's who is affected though. Right, who I mean, based on the you know, income the level? Right, millionaires affected, or is it right. affordable poor people affected, right. or is right. it who is it? Well, there is a means test. I mean, there is, you know, isn't there no, a, um, a, a lid oh. to how many people, how, how, well, I guess it happens basically on that threshold that David pointed out, that break point even. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really where it comes yeah. in. And, and that's David, what we're trying to figure out. Yeah. Well, that's not a means test. That's a property value test. Yeah, that's not a means test. That's it's kind of like test. a... You know, if you're at a certain point, you're just not going to get anything out of it. It's going to go. The I mean, without direction. without um, without getting into the details, if you take a look at the exemption that we're going to consider later on in this meeting, um, I, I think that's a classic case right there. The exemption that the person that we're looking at 
who, uh, since we're not in executive session, <laughs> I mean, uh, we have people in town who have, you know, ex relatively expensive houses who, who have, who are of, of limited means. So property rich and, and, and low well, income. Well, that's, yeah. that's not based on fact. I mean, that maybe, you know, some individuals that way. <laughs> There's not a lot. That's what one of the questions we're trying to answer. When was the last time that million dollar house sold? But you you don't you don't get the answer unless you ask people um, about their finances. That's to to some degree, yeah. And I I just don't see how, how as a government authority you can um, ask those kinds of questions and expect uh, to get um, complete answers. Okay, well that's part of what we can go back to the council. That's true. We can't answer your questions mm -hmm. did, did they did they actually ask us for the impact on the, on the, on the income basis of people not directly what they said i mean what andy said you know that in the past time we reviewed this we thought a lot of people older people would be affected because they own the higher price homes right and so that's what we're all going on but that was how many years ago that that was looked at. That is definitely true. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So, you know, David did a cut and basically the break even is roughly about 770,000 or $570,000 roughly the break even. Oh, is that right? Okay. All right. Yeah. I keep forgetting what the number is. I thought it was 470, mm -hmm. but 570. Well, he just looked at it recently. And that's the break even. And then, and then of course the question is at what level as Lee said, but it's five, you know, 10%, 20%. Yeah. But everybody above that would pay something more. And they're roughly 290 units or parcels above that number. So 290 parcel owners would some way have to pay more. That's right. But the other thing I consider is how many people are going to be close to that number? How many people are going to save a few dollars as opposed to the number of people that save four or $500? Mm. No. And just for information wise, they're only, I was surprised, there are only nine parcels above a million dollars in the Amherst. And the single family residential, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised it was lower than I thought it was. There are only, there are only nine from yeah. one million plus homes in the Amherst? Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. We can make cans a million dollar plus if you like, you know, it's not a problem. <laughs> Again, David, that 570 number is, is how do we explain that? The break even? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Explained, what great deliberation. <laughs> well, the, you know, the way we've explained it is that people have to realize that the exemption is a fixed amount. So at some point, the persons above a certain level are going to uh, be paying more even with the exemption. And the way we've chosen to do that at the moment is Ken and I and Liz have discovered, um, put together a spreadsheet that we can uh, that I will send to you, and it shows you the different break-even points for the 10, 20, and 30 percent. And then, oh, of course, every it does not include the non-occupied in that. Mm -hmm. so they, all, non they all pay more. They will automatically all pay more. Yes. All the, yeah. mm -hmm. all, all the landlords will pay more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not or necessarily the, landlords, but. Or their tenants. Or yeah. anybody yeah. that's above oh, that yeah, 570. Down, yeah. So essentially, is it fair to say that all tenants will pay more? Yes, uh, that's fair to say. No, yes. well, you got to be careful here. It's competitive nature. If an apartment can't lease units, they're going to drop their rent. So it's not just in vacuum here, you know, it's if true, all apartments but... are running at a hundred percent, then sure. Mm -hmm. They'll raise everything as much mm -hmm. as they can. Right. Regardless of whether it's passed yeah. to the tenants or not, it's passed it's to the other properties. Right. That's what we can say. It was yeah. not owner occupied. Everything. Yeah. Not owner there. occupied properties will be receiving that shift from the owner occupied properties. Right. And I think it only had like 272 um, when I last looked at the number of people in Amherst that were taking part in our tax relief for seniors. That's pretty low, 272. That actually seems high. You mean for the ability to, for the exemption? For the circuit breaker. Oh, I don't know. State circuit, circuit breaker. breaker. Yeah, because um, 
I, I got something, but it was it was an older listing. So I have I'm going to request the most recent listing of people taking part in the state circuit breaker program. Okay, I didn't see that yet. Okay, so as the chair, I have to keep this meeting moving. So Certainly. I guess I'm trying to figure out where we're going with this now. I don't know. Um, um, I will send you all out the. Um, wait a minute. I'm not sure we want to do a survey at all. Can I? And I just want to acknowledge that when you have a three member board. It's pretty hard to do to um, to get the work done outside of the meetings. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's um, given the we don't get some kind of a waiver for being three people uh, from the open meeting law, so we can't just sit and chat, you right. know, between meetings. Oh, so, we could have more chats, right? <laughs> or not? We could have more public meetings. Yeah, more public meetings. Yeah, more public meetings that are noticed. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. And, and just so you know, um, Paul and Paul is very anxious to receive the information on this. I was uh, told in my job review that I was not providing the information that they wanted when they wanted it. Well, the question is, what information do they want? Residential exemption information. They want the study done and reported. All right. Can I make a, can I make a suggestion? Thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, sir. We at the moment have the list of everything that we believe is either owner occupied or not owner occupied. Why don't we take all the improved parcels and see everybody that's non owner occupied and we send out a request directly to them to verify that it's non owner occupied and add that to the ones then are, that are owner, owner occupied and that'll give us right away a basis for uh, working off the the number we have, and that's that's the most important thing in my mind at the moment is getting as accurate as we can on who lives, who owns and occupies, and who doesn't. Okay. So you're going to yeah. say we're weaning it down to just the ones you feel that are not owner occupied, just to verify. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to send them. I wouldn't send them out the land. And if Brian no, robbed 20 pieces of parcels, I wouldn't send them out to him either. So residentially but, improved property. Right. So, but at some point during the game, we will have to let the apartment owners know what's happening so they can take a look at it as well. But am I under, you're just going to send it to non-owner occupied? The ones that, yeah, the ones that we believe are non-owner occupied, just find out. Well, that's it's important. basically to verify. Okay. What about the ones that are, you have as owner occupied, and they're not really owner occupied. They won't have. We'll continue to list them as owner occupied, and they won't be. Well, yeah. So I don't know. We're only covering half the half the group. We're checking to make sure the non-owner occupied or non-owner occupied, but on one hand, it's almost more concerning to make sure the owner occupied ones are not really rentals now. Well, then maybe we're back to the point of, and, uh, <clears throat> of a type of survey that's just basically a one question survey. Do you yeah. own and occupy this parcel? And I think, you know, it's good to, you know, maybe classify in a references. Do you claim residency to, to the um, state of Massachusetts in the immersed? If you can clarify that, because a lot of times folks will say, yeah, I'm a resident, but they don't necessarily claim their residency in Amherst. And that's one well, way that we could do it. If we're just sending it to the single family people, you can put in there, did, where did you, did you file a mass 2019 income tax return? And mm -hmm. that will take care of whether they're but I, can I get that information from the state? I don't think so. I don't. Uh, good luck on dealing with the IRS on the state. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I can do it under um, the freedom of information law. Um, I know I was able to get it from the secretary. Uh, if you're going to send out a survey, I just add add that one question. Yeah. Okay. And so we're down to basically two questions. The survey. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the other, th the other thing that they okay. that I was um, told that we did not do well was the um, Massachusetts uh, UMass UMass study. Um, just so you all know where we are at that, um, we did actually send out uh, forms of list to forty one businesses. 
and we have to wait for them to be completed and returned. What so UMass the, study? The UMass study to find out what taxable property that may have been missed. Oh, oh okay. And, uh, you know, basically. How did, how did that request come about? Um, what I had noticed was we had a number of businesses and we did have a number of businesses that had contacted me and said, well, how come the folks at the, the universities don't have to pay taxes or fill out the forms? Oh, okay. So I looked into it and we did find 41 of them. Oh. Um, so we sent out forms of list and um, if they claim exemption, I want them to fill out the three ABC form. But uh, because we didn't have the monetary increase, they felt that I should have had that information done already. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, 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 what we're doing between what's happening between now and March 11th. I think we need to get feedback from Paul and maybe Sean too. I don't know your boss, Liz. So. Okay. Because, you know, if anybody goes out online and looks at the studies other towns have done about this residential exemption, You've done that, Ken? Oh yeah, there, there are 15. Yeah, there's a lot out, out there. There are 15 of them out there. Okay. Do this now. And I mean, Lexington probably has, they probably spent a hundred thousand doing a survey. Wow. Right. I mean, it's something, it's unbelievable what they wrote. But uh, if everybody looks at that, we're not gonna be anywhere close to anything like that. No. Uh, okay. How how were there any trends? Like, how recently did Lexington do that? I'd have to ago? see, but the, uh, ago, maybe. the assessor for, um, let me see, where is Lane now? I think. And did they reach a conclusion? Lane did the most recent one. And he was the one that said to me that he didn't do a survey. He did it from uh, the information he got from the voters list and from the circuit breakers for the folks that had signed up for circuit breaker. So, um, Ken, Ken, was there any trend and, and any common thread? Yeah, it's, um, it's evolving, is what I'd say. You know, without digging deeper, I'd say, you know, it's either on, either on the Cape where you have a huge rental population, the homeowners want to help somebody pay their taxes because right. their services are out of sight, or it's near Boston where you have a lot of college kids. Commercial. Oh. Plus, they have commercial too. Plus, they yeah. have commercial to help offset it. Uh, Lexington actually decided not to do it. And they went on to look at a means residential exemption. And there have been four or five cities that have actually implemented a means residential exemption, which that story is very much out right now, whether it's, it's work in progress. So on this survey, do we want to include what, um, what range someone's income might fall in? If we can figure it, if we can find out what it is. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a range saying, you know, I don't know what the ranges would be, but it'd be, you know, less than 50,000 household income. Yeah. 50 to 100,000, above so, 100,000. I don't know. So was the Lexington survey asking people about their income? I don't I'll ask. It, it was, you can get out, I can send it to you. I okay. mean, it's, it's a long, long survey. <laughs> or not a survey, it's a study. It's a report that took a year to do. Okay. And they, the interesting uh, thing is when I try to ask assessors for their surveys, they're coming back to me and say, well, I didn't, I didn't send a survey. They did it based on those uh, peripheral facts that they had cleaned from voter listing, et cetera. But a lot of the cities did have a, a study group that came up with a study. How did they do it? They, did, they didn't do a survey, but I don't know how they got all the information. Yeah, so would so it be they must be getting it from another source. Would it be fair to say that we have a higher percentage of rental units um, um, uh, versus owner versus um, homeowners um, than other than other back. cities? Than other cities, yeah. Yeah. Other, yeah. We're sort of, we sort of fall in between the Cape and Boston. Yeah. I mean, we don't have any commercial, so that doesn't help us like it does around Boston. That's right. But Lexington, when I read the report, I took away saying, here's a really, really wealthy community that doesn't want to do this because they don't think it helps the poor enough. And therefore, they want to look at a different way to help the poor. Yeah, which is, which is a little bit where we are, right? Well, the, the thing we have different is that, you know, I'd say, what, 55% of our units, units, not parcels, but units are rental. 
That could well be, yes. But um, know, we're, we're looking at like the city data, it, it, it's leaning towards um, about 50% is uh, college age students that are in our population. So that would mean that 50% of the people that are here, I would think, would be very much in that category. So if you look at, um, if you go to city-data.com and you put in Amherst, it'll give you some statistics that'll help you out substantially as far as the population and so what, forth. What's it ranges the website from 1990 again? to 2020. It is city-data.com. Okay. If you go into that website, you'll see that there is substantial um, statistics and they use these for uh, MLS. That's what this uh, re reference source is. How accurate it is, you know, a lot of it's, again, guesstimates. As right, but you, just, you just said that 55% of the units uh, of the residential units in town are rental. Is that, isn't that what you just well, said? Well, I can't really say that in, in honesty. It's just the population of people. Well, it does give that population. But I says, think Ken, I, Ken's talking about units, not population. Yeah, let me back up a minute. Let, let's go back to what David's been working on. And David, you've done an outstanding job. Um, yes, thank first you. First of all, owner occupied, there are 4,037 units, if you want okay. to talk down. Non owner occupied, there are 2,280 parcels. So number of parcels in Amherst, those two added together comes up to 6,317 parcels. Okay. If you take the non-owner occupy and blow that 2,280 up. Yes. Okay. There are 3,424 apartment units. 3,000 how many? 424. Okay. So you add, you have to do some, you have to take away 95. That's the number of apartment units or apartment properties. So you have to take that away and add the two together. So you come up with owner occupied, there's 437 units and parcels, the same thing, units and parcels. But if you look at non-owner occupied and you blow up the apartments into units, there are 5,609 units in no non-owner occupied categories. So if you had the 4,037 4, owner occupied units. Yes. To the 5,609 non-owner occupied units. Yes. I'm up with 9,646 units in Amherst. Okay. These yeah, are and that's that corrobor that's corroborated with the number of units that they said that we have in town. Okay. So okay. You know, that's the number probably, of residents. You know, you divide the 4,037 by 9,646, what's that? That's less than 50%, obviously. Yeah, so the reverse is the true. That, oh, that comes out to be 42%. 42%. So basically 58% of the units in Amherst are rental. Yeah, they exceed the, the number that are owner occupied. And so to me, that is, I mean, I'm sorry, I guess I, for me, that's the end of the discussion, at least um, about the decision. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so essentially you're, you would shift the, t the property tax burden onto, um, onto well, you would be shifting the tax burden onto the, the highest the, the highest evaluated ho assessed houses, plus right. plus plus the plus all the apartments in town, right? Am I wrong on that? No, you're right. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. the point of it. Yep. And so, to me, with uh, knowing this council the way I think I know the council, the load on tenants ends the discussion. Okay, well then, then we just need to talk to Paul and present that to him and say, let's stop the study. There's no point doing any more. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I those, we get those, to stop the study. I think we still have to give a Those are real statistics report. though. Those are, I mean, um, I, I, I didn't follow it the whole way through, but uh, what, what you just went through, Ken. But well, the, some we, people will ask, well, that's fine, but tell me who occupies those around you. Yeah, it's that's the question right. of, of, and, 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 of and students. Then, it's the question of students yeah, versus low income. 
you know, if p folks are worried about the impact on low income, and that's what they raise the objection about, but if, if students, if, if there's an assumption that students are capable of paying more rent, um, I don't, I don't think that assumption carries. I, I, you know, I just. Well, you look at the rent, the students that are running in downtown now paying two thousand, three thousand dollars a unit. Yeah, that, that flies very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, <clears throat> go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> yeah, one of one of the complexes in, or two of the complexes in town that we have to watch out for is up on uh, State Street, WD Coles, and on Halleck Street, the, the ones that are owned by Shumway, because they try and keep people for a long time with lower incomes and families. You know, we would be impacting them just as well as everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones I know about economically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't really care about North Square. They just get carried away all together, the rents up there. But... Uh, So no matter you, who you so Ken, you're saying that 58% of the residential units in town, by your rough calculation, are rental units. Is, David, is that roughly right? I, I mean, can see that. Yeah, I've never yeah, I think so. Yeah, based on a rough what I looked at, and David ran all these as far as if I'm doing the roughly right, definitely more than 50% are rentals. So in, in, in other words, in order to give the vast majority of that 42% a tax break, a residential tax break, right. you would then be a, you would then be shifting the burden onto the rental units plus the 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 highly the the, the, the three, three, 290 units above the break even resident single right. family. So 290 owner occupied homes plus the rental units. Right. Right. I, so 290 policy, are above the break even point? Correct. Yes. As public policy, I don't think that will fly, but that's, you know, that's up to the council, obviously. But, well, maybe what we should do is give an interim update or a first update to Sean and Paul. Yes. Yeah. They need something one, because here's I guess one major. what's yeah. happening, I believe, to Sean a and one Paul pager. is when they go like to council meeting. They I like the sound of a one pager. Point. Yeah. They need they need to pro provide a response to council is basically what I'm saying to you, is that we need to give them a status report. Okay. Okay. And, and they want and a the one pager. I, I like the one pager idea, Richard, um, because I think you we've gotten to the point where where there's a basic level of understanding. You can't get to the detail of who's in the rental units right now, but maybe that's yeah. something for the future. That, see, that's very important to point out. You can't get into the detail of who's in the rental units. Right. Like I said, the only resource I would have is the voting list, and it's a matter of how many people participate in the voting process. And, and, and it's not 100%, so we don't it know. It is not 100%. It doesn't include anybody that's not a voter. That's right. right. A lot right. of people in town that are not voters. Right. Absolutely. So, like I said, it would, it would be a matter of how many people participate in that process to make it accurate. And as I said, this is how some of our, our assessors have done this in other jurisdictions. I'm only pointing out how they did it. Whether or not you want to apply it is up to you. Well, um, it's now 1216. Uh, we're trying to figure out what, what's the action, what's the action-oriented suggestion that's being made here. Okay, David, you had a comment. What were you gonna say? Well, actually, I was gonna say I just sent you uh, all of you an email with yes. a spreadsheet. Uh, I can I bring it up if you like. Well, oh no, let's not go there yet. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. I just want to make sure I'm uh, making uh, sure I accommodate you. Um, we I, have one, there's five, uh, five tabs at the bottom. We've got the basic mailing list that we've filtered out everybody who was uh, multiple units and one thing and another. Okay, so Lee, a, you listen to this because if you don't understand, it gets confusing looking at that spreadsheet unless you know what the columns are. Right, you've got the mailing list that shows all the people we could potentially mail to that we believe are um, one property owners or, a, or a, um, an apartment complex owner who are a multiple parcel owner and just the one that he owns, he or she owns. And the second tab is Ken's summary, which breaks it down into residential classes and whatever. Uh, what each one comes to off the LA4. 
And on the side of that, I figured out the uh, tax rate and the break even point on columns O, P, and Q. So you can see that. Liz, can you go up? You're up. You need to go up a level, Liz. Up. To the tabs. To this? Okay, oh, okay. This. They're at the bottom there. They're at the bottom. See, Liz, yeah. what Liz is doing? Yes. So this is the mailing list. Yes. Okay. Let me just yeah. control home. All right. So where is the headers on this? I'm trying to make it big enough so you can see. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can, it's big enough on 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 Dave's uh, on Dave's email, but um, yeah, it's hard to see on, the, on this. Well, well the, per the yeah. purpose this is our Ken, summary. Is this Ken's summary here? Yes, it is. It's so I, I figured I'd hold here. Let me just make it a little bit bigger for you. So this so is that, what, we, what we've done there is that um, Ken asked some questions and I took it and ran with it. He broke down. Column G is the total assessed valuation for the different price of properties in residential classes. Yes. And then we, uh, I took it went over further and we did the owner occupied and non-owner uh, non -owner occupied. Yeah. And then owner occupied. And we figured out what the exemption would be at a 10% level of the average of the average assessed value for the residential, 20% and 30%. Yeah. And then the bottom three columns are what the tax rates would adjust to at those levels. As you can see, the tax rate was 2182 at 10% would be 2331, 20 would be 2501, and 30 would be 2699. Mm. So that, that, those are, that's the impact on the tax rate only within the residential uh, class of property. And just one comment on uh, column I, the 95, I-16. Yes. See the 95? Yes. That's the number of parcels or properties. Yes. When you look at that as units, that blows out to be 5,609 units. The, the non-owner occupied. Yeah, the 95 becomes, if you do by units, 5,609. 5,609, right. That's that's on nine. That's on the total number of parcels, which is whatever that is. No, the it's on ninety-five becomes five thousand six hundred nine if you're doing it by units. Oh, the ninety-five. Oh, I'm sorry, four units and up blows up to okay. All right, okay, all right, I got that. And I so just, basically, this number six thousand three seventeen parcels becomes 9,646 units over here under F. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, unfortunately, um, I'm not a big data, a great data cruncher, but I have sort of a common sense, um, a, a, I have a common sense appreciation of this, which is um, that um, it's, you know, just um, creating a an uncertain consequence, and maybe someone wants to disagree with me about the uncertain consequence. But what rents will do? That seems to me to be a a pretty imprecise calculation. Well, it, from, it's from, subject from, to, it's subject to market conditions, right? So it's yeah. So it's. So it's like jumping off a cliff. I mean, depending on what you're exempt. I mean, get, having an exemption is you, you you create a fairly certain tax break for a certain number of property owners in town and a fairly uncertain load on other people. Okay, can I ask you to go to tab four? Sure. There's this tax per unit. Bring this up a little bit so everybody can see. Wow. No, tab four, tab four, Liz, tax per unit. That's this is the tax per unit page. Oh, okay. And this is the tax per unit here. Right here. Oh, oh, Mel, that's the basic tax per unit at the moment with the standard 2182. And you see, then it goes up per unit now. Then it goes up uh, by, what, $80 or $108 per unit at 10% and considerably more at 20%. And then again at 30%. So you can see what the impact would be per unit. 
I don't know what it would be per bed. I haven't figured that out, but. So it could go from 1583 in the first example to 1960. Okay, yeah. so that's. Okay. That's pretty substantial. So that's 300 plus bucks, almost $400 in right. a year, right? Yes. That's it, gonna have to get passed on to somebody. Right. That's right. So that, that's how you would read that one as you go down, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now at the moment that's sorted by street address. So, I mean, you can change it around to go low to high if you want and see what's there. Uh, but I mean, look at Bowling Green, the fourth was number line six uh, with... Um, this is the new apartment complex in North Amherst. No. <laughs> No. Right. Oh, no, no Rolling Green? Yeah, Rolling Green on Belcher Town Road. Yeah. So it's and, going and, from and, 1600 and to 2011. Co column K is number of units? The number of, the number of apartments, Lee. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You know, Ken suggested a while ago was maybe something we need to talk to um Paul and Sean about I realize this is raw data at the minute it's not really refined but maybe this is something we should take to them and let them see what the possibilities are and talk to them from there I think they need they to have, have something they can report back to the um the council I, I, I say any further suggestions to go from there yeah and, um, and, and I like the, the the idea that you know that the 58 percent of the units are rental but we don't know exactly who <laughs> is in the unit and that's another level of study and uh, right. we, we we are pretty sure that 290 um, uh, parcels are above the break even right and and that's pretty uh, uh, that, that's significant understanding I guess uh, Dave, I mean, do you think Lee do you think that's a big number or a small number I, I think it's a small number. Okay. David, how hard is it to take that 290 and, and put a column when they last sold? Wouldn't be hard at all, but we have to run the data out of the computer. Uh, yeah. So it's just a matter of uh, basically restarting the, the, two, the 290? Well, above break even to run. I mean, run it all, but above break even, it'd be nice to know how many sold in the last five years, last 10 years. Because if they sold in the last five years, there's not an old folk there. Yeah. Well, we could, uh, it's doable. Yes. I don't know how hard it is. I don't think it'll be that hard. But you're but but you're talking about a permanent change. Well, you can it changes every year. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Right. You know, but here again, we come into the point: is once you give somebody something, how hard is it to take away from them? Can't and that you can't withdraw from the program once you've issued it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you you can, but it's very difficult. I mean, Have one you seen town, anybody do it? Yeah, mm -hmm. one town has gone back. Really? Uh, yeah, and that was the town that had two power plants that closed down. Mm -hmm. Oh. Down by the Cape, and therefore they had to readjust everything. Uh huh. Because they are really depending on the power plants to pay most of the taxes. Okay, so do we do we delegate? Um, are we going to delegate to Ken and to Ken and Dave to uh, to to present this information to Sean and Paul? Well, well I, think we're going? I think you really should have Liz do it. Yeah, okay. have Liz do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ken. I'm your liaison to Paul and and Sean. Okay. So yeah. Basically, I mean, what they're asking me is, what progress have we made on these studies, and what can we report at this time? And it looks to me as though Ken has done a, a, a ton of work. Yeah. Yeah. Long yeah. David. No, David's done a ton of work. Dave, okay, David. And done. we got to give credit to Teresa because Teresa pulls a lot of those reports that go okay. into All deciding right. what this is but going we, on. But in order to, I mean, to keep to keep things good with Liz, we need to uh, we need to show them something, right? Right. Right. Liz, Liz, is, Liz has to stand and deliver, so to speak. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm like, like my 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 annual review is not glowing, put it that way. Okay, all right. Okay. We want to see all better right. better in the middle of a for pandemic, the residential exemption. It, your review should glow the way it does behind you there. Right. It did not. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. 
Like Just drug prices, it can go up, right? Uh, I was pretty That's discouraged. Great. I will be honest with you. I was uh, not. I was not impressed. Okay. Okay. Let me do a one pager and share it with Liz, and then she can share it with everybody else. Okay. Because I do want everybody's input. And basically, I think what we're going to say. Well, I don't know what we're going to say, but I'll do it. <laughs> we'll do a summary of this stuff. Okay. And then. I think the conclusion is, you know, without a lot of res additional resources, we really can't dig deeper. Right. We, I mean, right. this is what to, we can do with what we have to work with. In order to figure out who is living in these units. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, and it seems like maybe up. not great timing, considering that we're going to get U.S. census data that that would give us a lot of the information that we're looking for. Okay. The census data for 2020 is going to be published. Okay. Um, so right. to 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 put a lot of resources towards that in a time when we really need to focus a lot more attention in other areas. Okay. It doesn't seem like the best use of our resources. Okay. I, have we exhausted this topic? Because we have one more agenda item. We do have one more agenda item. Yes. Okay. 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 I'm going to close out of this particular spreadsheet. Thank you for sending that, David. No problem. Okay. And I'll look forward to looking at this stuff. Yeah. Right. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for what you've yeah. done on this. They do, they've done yeah. a tremendous job, and yeah, thank, I, there's no way so I much. could have addressed it and yeah. try to stay with thank it to, to get For it. For some reason, you know. Ken is fascinated by this stuff, clearly. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he had a choice in this matter, uh, did he? Okay. Well, once, he well, once he got into it, right, right, Ken? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot to consider. A whole lot on the survey, Liz. Don't do anything on the survey. Yes, Okay. But you know, it was good. It was good information to find out what is available to us as far as our resources, because I had no idea that the town had an account with SurveyMonkey and that you could send out a survey other than just paper. So that's really good information for future reference if we don't do it, but even if we do. Um, and David, if you, if you can get those sales dates for the above break even in the next week or so. I can get you them today. That's not a hard thing to do. Um, well, because it's what? just a matter of adding adding the um, the sale data to that information. That's oh, cool. okay, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, okay. so that's not a that's not a hard information. That's information we have within our database, so that's not okay. hard. Just add up to David's column there, another column if you can. That's exactly it. Okay, we'll, you know, we'll just okay. include another another column. So the next thing that we're we're supposed to consider, um, am I? Is it okay to move on, Richard? Yes, it is. Okay. So we have a personal um, exemption application. Yes. Um, and because it is a private nature, um, we've sent it to you, I believe, correct? Yes, you have. Uh, we have to go into private. We do I, have to do an executive session for executive. this if we wish to discuss yes, this and, further. And does that mean we come off the tape? Um, that means I leave you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good question. And okay. yes, I think I Thank do you, stop David. the recording. Thanks, for David. This. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, David. I appreciate your help. Bye. So I'm going to pause the recording so that we can go into executive session. Okay. All right. Just the the information that has been uh, that that Ken and Dave have developed. What's going to happen with that information? Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to consolidate the information and the steps that have been taken. I'm going to give it back to Dave and um, Ken so that they can approve what we put forward to uh, Paul and Sean. Correct. Okay, and, and we're going to get a chance to to review that uh, one pager if that's what it results in. It's up to you. How do how would you like me to do that? Would you like me to send it to more than just Ken and Dave? Liz, I'll Great. be I'll be happy to do a draft of the one pager. That perfect. That's perfect. Send it Ken. to you first, and then you yeah. can add what you want. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, right. yeah. Unfortunately, I think that they um, they were of the it's uh, the idea that you know we'd be able to give them answers sooner than we could. You know, okay. That's too bad. I wow. think I, that's that's on me. I should have clarified that. No, did okay. Sean ever see a draft of the timeline? I did not share that with him until okay, we had a chance to, to bring it forward to the board. I yeah, felt that we fine. should bring it here before we bring it to any other public uh, venue. Okay, I'd like to public, but Sean. Okay. I'd like to propose a, a next date, Mar Thursday, March 11th, please. Okay. okay. Gentlemen. Bye. I'm okay. Okay. Does that work with you, Liz? Of course. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. So wherever you want to go, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. 11 a.m. All right. March the 11th. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Happy Valentine's Day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Have a good Bye -bye. week. Do we have to send you one, Richard? No. <laughs> <laughs>